I welcome you all for today's lecture. Today we are going to see how to determine change in dimension in a bar when it is subjected to an axial force. Let me read the problem. A bar made of A36 steel has the dimension shown in figure. So this is the given configuration of the bar and it has the dimension of length 1.5 meter it has the width of 100 mm which is equal to 0.1 meter and it has the thickness of 50 mm and it is 0 0.05 meter if an axial force of P 80 kN is applied to the bar determine the change in its length and the change in the dimensions of its cross section so when it is subjected to an axial load 80 km which is acting along z axis have to calculate what is the change in its length okay, what is in it change along this z direction so we know that uh, when it is subjected to an axial force along this z direction the length is going to be extended after the application of this load. Similarly, we are asked to calculate the change in the dimension of its cross section. So the cross section has the two dimensions, one is width and the thickness. And we are also asked to calculate what is the change in width as well as the, what is the change in thickness. That means what is the dimension change along x-axis and along y-axis. The condition is the material behaves elastically. Young's modulus of the material is 200 gigapascal and the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.32. In order to calculate the change in dimension, we are going to apply Hooke's law as well as Poisson's ratio constant. Let us solve the problem. First, the axial force is 80 kilo. Young's modulus is 200 giga Pascal. Giga means 10 to the power of 9. And 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton. 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. So, here we can write the Young's modulus is 200 into 10 to the power 9. This represents giga. And 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter and the Poisson's ratio is 0.3. So we are asked to calculate the change in dimension along z axis, that is the change in length of the bar, and change in dimension along its cross section, that is del x and del y, which represents changes in the dimension of its cross section. This is the given bar. By using the axial force which is acting along the z axis, we are going to calculate the normal stress in the bar. So the stress, normal stress is equal to applied load over the cross sectional area. Here the applied load along this z axis is 80 kN. So the cross-sectional area of this section is this one is the width and this one is the thickness. So we have to multiply width with the thickness of this bar to find out the cross-sectional area and it is equal to 0 0.005 meter square. Now let us calculate the normal stress of the bar. So P is a known thing that is uh, 80 into 10 to the power 3 divided by cross sectional area is 0 0.005 meter square. So the stress which is acting along this z axis is determined and it is 16 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 newton per meter square. Now we are going to calculate the strain in the z direction. For that we have to apply the Hooke's law. Stress value is equal to 
yeah, it's modulus times strain. So if you want to find out the strain value, strain value is equal to stress divided by the x modulus. So here we are going to calculate the strain along z direction. So E z is equal to stress along z direction divided by the x modulus. So now we have got the formula calculate the strain along z direction. Is stress divided by Gain's modulus. So 16 multiplied by 10 to the power 6, which represents the stress along the direction, and divided by 200 multiplied by 10 to the power 9, which is the Gain's modulus of the. So now the strain along the direction is 80 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6. It does not have any dimension because the strain is changing dimension to original dimension. So then we are going to calculate the axial elongation of the bond when it is subjected to an 80 kilometer tensile force along this direction. For that we need to apply the concept of strain. So strain along z direction is equal to change in dimension along z direction that means change in length along this z direction divided by the original length original length is here so if you want to find out the change in length so what we need to do is tell z is equal to the strain along z direction multiplied by this original by using this formula, we can calculate the axial elongation of the form. So, del z is equal to e z multiplied by l. So, we know that the length of the bar is 1.5 meter and the strain along the direction is 80 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. So, the axial elongation of the bar, that means the change in dimension along z direction is 1 to the multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 meter. We have calculated the change in dimension along z direction. That means the elongation of the bar. So now we are going to calculate the change in dimension along the cross section of this bar. That means along x and y. We know that the strain along x and y are the lateral strain. And this z direction represents the Longitudinal strain. So we have calculated the longitudinal strain. Now we are going to calculate these two lateral strains. So we know that these two lateral strains are equal in magnitude. That is, Ex is equal to Ey. Now let us use Poisson's ratio to determine the lateral strain. It means Ex and Ey. So Poisson's ratio is lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain is E is at we have already calculated. So Poisson's ratio is already known. By using that, we can calculate what is the lateral strain that is Ex. So Ex value is equal to 0.3, which is the Poisson's ratio. And the longitudinal strain is E is at which is 80 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6. So the strain along the x direction is 25.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6. That means it is the lateral strain. It is the lateral strain. And also we know that Ex is equal to Ey. So now we have calculated the strain along the x and y axis. So we can easily calculate the change in dimension along the x. That means change in width and change in thickness. Let us calculate the change along the x direction. We know that the strain along x direction is equal to change in length. That means change along x direction divided by the original. So here the original distance is the width of the form which is represented by W. 
So if you want to calculate the change along this x direction, means del x, which is equal to strain along x direction multiplied by the width of the bar. Let us calculate this. Okay. So the strain along x axis is already known that is 23.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 multiplied by the width initial width of the bar is 0.1 so the change along its cross section in the x direction is 2.56 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 that, that means it represents the change in width of the bar when it is subjected to an Axial load of 80 kilometer. So now we are going to calculate the del y. That means the change in length along this y direction. That means here it is representing thickness. So the change in dimension along y direction is equal to EY multiplied by the thickness because here this theorem of represents the so, this value is del y is equal to ey multiplied by t. ey is already known because the lateral strains are equal ex and ey. It's 25.6 to the 34 minus 6 multiplied by this thickness that is 0 0.05 meter. So, this value is 1.28 multiplied by 34 minus 6. Okay. This problem we have calculated the change in length means the change in dimension along the axial direction where the load is acting a change in dimension along the other two axes that means perpendicular to this axial direction del x and del y value and we have also applied the concept of strain and Poisson's ratio and Hooke's law in order to calculate the change in Play as well as changing it and changing thickness. Thank you for watching.